Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. So today we have Savage Kingdom. This is a National Geographic documentary series. It's about four seasons, about 22 episodes total. It's like between four and six episodes per season. And uh, it's from 2017 to 2020. And they're all about 50 minutes each. Um, it's another documentary about Africa, <laughs> about the animals living in Africa. You know, they got the lions, you got the elephants, you got the water buffalo, you got the hyenas. These are the hyenas, I'm pretty sure. Uh, this is not the cute, cuddly one. This is not the one where they follow a altruistic mother through uh, all sorts of um, <laughs> trials and travails uh, against uh, would-be predators uh, with her beautiful little cubs that are playfully playing whenever there's not danger around and it's all happy and pleasant and the story ends in a happy hurrah in the end and everybody is it's a beautiful place. Africa is just a it is a beautiful place but not for these creatures <laughs> in reality. This is the bloodiest I have ever seen when it comes to these types of documentaries. So if you're into that, go for it. You, the blood is red and it is there from the very beginning. If you have the slightest problem with blood, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna want to avoid this. Yeah, pretty much. Uh <laughs> There is upsetting. It even warns you at the very beginning of the text. Is, this is this. You may find this upsetting. You there's some stuff in this you will find. You you might. And it's not made for everybody. Okay. The reason being one of the biggest reasons in just the first episode. <sighs> Matsui is the name they give. They name the lion the mother lion. They name her. They kind of follow her around the whole time, and you get to see the thing that she interacts with. But again, Angela Bassett's not voicing her, and they're not just going on an adventure. No. She has cubs. <laughs> and at one point, they get taken from her and eaten by other lions. And you see it, not graphically, but you see some limp, dead fuzzy lion cubs and they don't say it right away they they imply it at first they're you just, the narrator and i'm gonna get to the narrator in a second because he is the main reason to watch this i'll tell you that right now <sighs> they don't necessarily come right out and say it until it's there's no way it can be any other thing happening at that moment and he just goes yeah they're dead and she's got to move on. What is she going to do? Oh, and the other, the other situation is, you know what? You know, as, as powerful and and uh, strong the female lions are, guess what? When the male lion shows up, who are the, you tend to be the ones who end up eating cubs that get in the way sometimes. Uh, when the male lion wants to do what he wants to do, make new cubs it's ex explicitly said that if she fights back if she doesn't want this well it's a death sentence to her and you get to see just a little portion of that it's yeah. so the only reason i would find watching any more episodes of this interesting is the fact that it's na narrated by Charles Dance. Now, if you know that name, yes, that means you're a Game of Thrones fan. He played Tywin Lannister. If you know that guy, if you know who Tywin Lannister is, the father, he's, in the, when we all start out the entire Game of Thrones thing, he's the, the big daddy of the Lannister family. He has many children including Tyrion, who is played by Peter Dinklage, and Cersei, who is played by, uh, Lena, Lena, Lena. I hate myself right now because I cannot say her name. Uh, 
But, yeah. He's the big bad daddy of this, and you just hear... I don't want to say evil. This is a man. He's, he's, a, he's probably a decent man. He's probably a wonderful guy. He has grandchildren, probably, and they all love him so. But he does this great bad guy voice. He's, it's deep. It's, it resonates. And they lean into the whole Game of Thrones thing. In fact, he has, as of this point, this is 2000, this is 17. Uh, you know, IMDb says 2016. Either way, he has already finished his run on Game of Thrones at this point. Okay, he's no longer playing Tywin. Let's just say that. Spoilers for Game of Thrones. They lean into the Game of Thrones thing because the very first episode is called what? Mother of Lions. Not Mother of Dragons. Mother of Lions. What are the other ones? Okay. okay. Oh, Queen of the Queen of the North. Come, ah, come on. Queen of the North is the fourth episode. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He says the North a number of times in this, and in the same way that Tywin Lannister would speak of the North. <sighs> With Starks and everything else. It, the same way. Honestly, you could, like, just cover up the screen or black out the screen, whatever you want to do, not look at the screen, and you could imagine that he is just doing the, reading the Game of Thrones novels without, with just a whole lot less incest, but maybe. I don't know what the lions are getting up to in part in episode two, but in, in this, in this, it's really, it's, it feels, it feels like, like a spinoff. Like Tywin got his spinoff on Game of Thrones and he's just still talking about what's going on in, in Westeros. And it's just lions instead. Lions are playing the parts of all the characters. He speaks to the queen and the king and the just, the battles and just, it, ugh. it's, he is the most entertaining part about this. If you don't really get into the whole lions tearing each other apart and the forced copulation uh, that you would find in the jungle, because, hey, that's what's going on there. It's just, it's not the happy fuzzy story. It's, it, it, it has all the characters in The Lion King for the most part in it. The hyenas and the lions over here, and there's elephants and all sorts of other animals skittering about. They just don't get along. Nobody sings. Nobody raises a, a cub to the sky. They eat the cubs. So I would just say, yeah, if I'm not, no judgment, if you, if you love to see the really bloody, brutal, visceral action you would get from watching animals in the wild in their real way and not softened in any way yeah this is for you but if you love charles dance you love tywin lannister just how he sounds is this is for you also uh, if you like both well then it's a it's a party but yeah i would watch it <laughs> just to hear tywin lannister just do more Game of Thrones stuff, but with lions. I don't know. There are way too many Africa documentaries on National Geographic. I get it. That's that's their bread and butter. They've been doing that for more than a century in magazines and then on television. But yeah, now they this one they just went, okay, let's just have them all eat and kill each other and blood everywhere. So, yeah. And Charles Dance. So, let's pick tomorrow's episode. 279. Wow, we're really sticking around this high 200s. 279. Oh, you know what? It's because I had to reset this because it crapped out on me. It picked a number that already exists, that we already did. Normally, it checks off any of the numbers that I've already used. And we wouldn't have this problem. But this is the second time 
this app has crapped out on me and I've had to, I knew this was gonna happen. So here we're gonna go pick another number. 224. 224, okay. Let's see if that is something we've done yet. Ooh, well, uh, huh, okay. We have not done this one, but it's Marvel thing again. So we had just done a Marvel thing the other day with uh, the consultant, one of the one shots, but this is a Marvel Studios Assembled. And it's, it's their, doc, their behind the scenes documentary series about each of the things uh, that they've, movies and TV series, well, Disney Plus series uh, that they've done uh, over the last few years. And this is actually really recent. So we're gonna get Marvel Studios Assembled, She-Hulk. So we're gonna see what went into making She-Hulk. I love Tatiana Maslany, so. It's a good day for me. Marvel Studios assembled She-Hulk and the next Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you back here tomorrow with that.